boom, we're on. We're on, Adam. We're I feel like we haven't done this in a while. It feels like it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. It's been a uh, crazy five months. Yeah. Is it five months now? Is that the official? It's been five months, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, 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 it was like what? March wow. 15th, yeah. right in that time frame. So, yeah. <sighs> I'm over it. <laughs> you and me both. We have a big day today, though. We do. Today's a big day because we're, we're actually cutting out of here early today to go to a movie in a theater. Mind-blowing. Iron Man. Did you ever think you'd be excited to go see a movie? Well, you've only seen it once. I've seen it multiple times, but never in theater. Which is weird to me. I've seen it like three times in the theater and excited to go back again. You're excited for your nap and popcorn. I will take a nap and I will have popcorn. Yep. Yes. Yes. So today, about. I don't know if I told you that today today's show is officially First Responder Day. I did not know that. Yep. Well. Yep. I've got uh, an officer of the law coming on first. Okay. And then I've got our good friend Roger Silvestro, who, who is, is not not a first no. responder. He's not even a third responder. No. He doesn't he's actually unresponsive. <laughs> true. Yes. But uh he's gonna come on later and he's gonna tell us about Team Tony. Right, can you get that, Trev? Am I yeah, team I got glare. Team Tony. He's gonna tell us about this. Look at those teeth. And uh Woo! you like that? That's Holly's Hollywood smile. Right dental there. right there. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, by the I, way, did I tell you I went to Hollywood Smile Dental? You did first I did, time. First time doesn't look Doctor. like it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm fucking with you. No, uh, and you got you just went for the basics. I just went to the basics teeth cleaning. Love the guy. We're gonna get you this deal though. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna yeah. try. No, no, there's no try. We okay. do. We do. All yeah. Right. All right. All right. Well, that, well, let's quit screwing around here and let's uh, let's bring on our first guest if we have her. Do we still have her, Travis? We've got Officer yes. Nicole. Coming to us from Laguna Beach. Rough Hello. life. How Rough life. And it's a better picture than sound check. Look at you. Perfect. Aw. So, thank you for coming on the show today. I slid into the DMs two hours ago thinking, not going to. No, no. Why would you respond? Why would you respond? It's crazy. I don't, I don't know. I mean... Don't talk to strangers. Isn't that what you guys tell everyone? <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's what we uh, tell the kids. So we won't say what city and state you are an officer in uh, for various reasons, but uh, the folks at home, you can certainly hear, uh, you could rule out a couple places. You could rule out New York confidently. You could rule out mm -hmm. Boston and Philly confidently, and you could rule out California and... But why were any of those out. out? Just because she has an accent doesn't mean she can't be a cop in that city. It's a good point. It's a good point. Maybe I'm just saying that to throw people off. You, you, well, mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I wanted to have you on today for a couple reasons. One, uh, Adam here, our co-host, uh, sent me a text earlier today with fantastic news that Live PD might be coming back. <laughs> and, really? And I am addicted to that show. Like, I watch Friday and Saturday nights, like, almost all three hours live because I got, I don't know, I just love that show. I can't get enough. <laughs> I can't get enough. Do you watch a show I like that or no? Um, I did when I was younger. Um, I, I live it every day, so I don't really have to watch it so much. What made you want to get into that line um, of work? So, the reason that I got into law enforcement was, you know, I kind of grew up in a, a difficult childhood, was an abusive relationship, and I wanted to be able to help people um, not go through the same stuff that I went through or help them through it. And how old were you when you made that decision? Um, so I, it took me five years to get on with law enforcement. So wow. Um, I've been an officer for three years now. So she was 16 when she started. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And wow. It, it took, when you say it took five years, it, meaning to like pass the tests or what, what, what takes so long? Um, I don't really know. Um, you know, I was kind of in a rocky relationship at the time. So that's, that's took me a little bit of time to actually get in there. But, um, the department I originally applied for, I went back five years later because they told me to come back. And then I came back whenever I had my situation figured out and they hired me and do you I love am. it? I do. I love my job. Um, very much actually. Is it scary? You get, you um, must, you just get over that part, right? 
Well, you know, there's, you do the job because you love what you do. You do it for, um, you know, whatever reasons that you're doing it for and I'm doing it to help people. So there are days that it can get scary. It's an adrenaline rush for sure, but it's worth it at the end of the day. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so with the current state of affairs going on, what has been the biggest change in your, in your role on a day-to-day basis? Um, you know, to be honest, where I work every day, I go into work, um, people that I come in contact with are always thanking me for what I do and, you know, tell me to be safe out there. So where I live, I don't, I don't deal with everything like, you know, all the other bigger cities are dealing with. So it hasn't affected me, you know, a lot at all. Really? So people, you haven't really experienced uh, like negative backlash from people, regular citizens or anything, nothing like that? No, not really. Um, You know, you'll get those comments every once in a while on social media, but for the most part, you know, you've always got those people that are, you know, defending law enforcement. They're, you know, we're people too, so. Right. And when you see people saying negative things, like whether it's, you know, in the news or, you know, on social media, not about you, but just in general about, about the police, what does it make you feel like? Um, you know, it's, there are people that it's kind of like in a situation where, you know, you have like the kid in school where it's a bad kid. He goes in there, he causes, he disrupts class and the whole class gets in trouble for it. And I only did that yes. once. I only did that <laughs> once, and no. Um, yeah, so you kind of have to look at it that way. Um, you know, I treat everybody equally. It doesn't matter about anything because um, we're all we're all humans. We all need to be treated equally. That's just, I mean, that's how the world should be, and I believe that everybody in law enforcement, um, in the community, and everything should all go by that. And when you see, obviously, you only know what you've seen on the video, like of, of the George Floyd uh, case. When you see that, what's your first reaction to a video like that when you when you see um, it? It angers me. Um, it angers every every officer um, because we're not trained that way. That's we're just not trained that way. And you know, those you've got those bad ones that shouldn't be in there, and they shouldn't. And, and you can say that they shouldn't look at that, but I can understand why people would look at all officers that way. But, you know, don't base what one officer's decision or another officer's decision was and put us all in that same category because we're not all that way. You know, a lot of us are out there to help people and it'd be the same for any other profession. It's just, you know, I, I believe that's how people should look at it and view things. Yeah. And is is one of your first thoughts too when you see something like that? Like what went through my mind wasn't oh that guy's racist. Like the first thing that went through my mind is that guy's just a bad cop. He's just bad at what he does. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, maybe I mean, he I, is or isn't racist. I don't know. But when I look at that video, like uh, it's the first thing that I think is like, what are you doing? Like you're just bad at what you do, right? Yeah. Um. He that that guy possibly had you know. He just shouldn't have been a police officer in the first place, to be honest. Right. I mean, if you've got that kind of mentality, then you don't need to be in this career field. It'd be like a doctor. You can't be a doctor and be in that, you know, that state of mind. You know, sure. your, your people's lives are in your hands every day. It's 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 crazy. I mean, you have this, the COVID stuff and then obviously the, all the Black Lives Matter now as well. As, as things changed in regards to your not your day to day, but how you look at what you do differently, or has it always been the same? Um, no, I still look at it the same. You know, um, we do a lot of community policing, and you know, I'm I'm partial to the, to kids and trying to get them, you know, to understand that, you know, they can, we should be the people that they can call for anything and. You know, I, I've come into contact with these kids and I'll usually bring them a toy or just, you know, go out and visit with the parents 
And that's what we should be doing more of is more community policing, more getting out there and knowing the people and people getting to know us. It's, it's, you know, it's scary to me how, you know, when I was growing up and we were growing up, how, you know, we looked up to police officers, right. you know, police officers were our role models. They'd come to school. It was yeah, like a big like deal. Dare, you know, right. the, you know, dare, you know, and now you see these videos of these kids hiding behind their parents when police officers come in the room or come around because of what they've seen on TV. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's sad to me. Now, obviously yeah. being a woman may be a little bit different as a police officer than a, if you or I were police officers, God forbid, um, <laughs> and, and having, being seen, you know, with children or around children. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it pisses me off, but that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Are, are people surprised when they meet you uh, when you're out of uniform and you they strike up casual conversation and they're like, so what do you do? Are they always shocked to hear your answer? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so there are, you know, I came in contact with somebody the other day, came up, they introduced themselves and they were like, hey, what do you do? And I'm, I, I look at them like, well, I'm a police officer. And they're like, no, you're not. Yes, I, I am, you know. Um, and does that bother you? No, not at all. Um, so, you know how people look at law enforcement as more of a male profession and it's not, you know, females, we do it, you know, every day. You have more, you have a lot of female officers out on the street and, um, you know, we have, we have compassion just like anybody else. So, right. It's, it seems like, uh, with the stereotypes to go on, uh, you, so I saw on Instagram, you recently got engaged. I did. Well, yes, I got engaged last year. Um, we oh, okay. were supposed to get married in October and, and we pushed it back because of COVID. So yeah. And your significant other is also an officer. Yes. Um, the canine officer actually. And female. And a female, yes. So, so you're just in the business of shocking men on a daily basis, basically. <laughs> they, they, they meet you. They're like, "Oh, what do you do?" They're thinking you're going to be in cosmetics or something, you know. Uh, and you're like, "Oh, I'm a cop." And they're like, they say, "Oh, I love a woman in uniform." And then you fire back, "So do I." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, they're a little shocked, especially, you know. I have people that'll come up to me and be like, "Oh, wow, you're engaged." Like. You know, what's your husband do? I'm like, well, she um, is law enforcement. So they're like, wait a minute, you're you're with the girl? Yep. Is that how you guys yep. met through law enforcement as well? We did. Um, we worked for the same department. And wow. um, we, we ended up becoming best friends. And um, then it just kind of went from there. And do you now your partner you said or your fiance has is canine. So do you have the dogs at home with you or dog? We do have the dog at home. Um, and he you know, he's not he's not a pet. He's he's a he's a tool. So, um, you know, we spend time with him, but he stays out out in his kennel. He doesn't come in the house and stuff like that. Just because, really? you know, I don't know if you know about Belgian Malinois, but they are. They're more, I mean, even if you have them as a pet, as people would, would say, they're actually more of a, um, protection dog than a pet. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend somebody just going out and, Hey, let me buy a Belgian Mountain Wall for my kids because they're, I mean, they're, that's just their mentality. So he, he kind of, he's a good dog for sure. So there's very little like social interaction with him when he's not on the clock kind of thing? No, no, no. He gets a lot of social interaction at home. He just, you know, I have kids, so he has to stay away from the kids. Got it. Yeah. And are they related to German Shepherds? Or are they similar? I'm the breed? Um, actually, no, they're not. So a lot of people will confuse German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois. So Belgian Malinois, um, they are, I mean, they kind of look like a shepherd, but shepherds actually have longer fur. They're a little bit thicker. Okay. Belgian Malinois are really super limber, um, and they, they're they gung-ho dogs, I guess you could say. And do those dogs constantly, are they constantly going through training? They or are, like so that, yes. Um, so like my fiance, she goes to training, um, you know, 
constantly every single day she's out training with him if we get a break in call volume or something like that she'll go and she'll do some training with him you know it's it's a it's a I, I, I've actually went out there and helped her train with him. So, and of course, I'm like mom too. Right. So, Me, when, when you've helped train like you wear that green colored uh, sleeve and get attacked kind of thing? or Actually, no. Um, I can't do um, – I won't do any kind of bite work or anything like that because, you know, he looks at me as a mom. So putting me in, you know, like one of the suits or a hidden sleeve or something like that is actually um, – Confusing. That's not really good for him. Yeah. Got it. That's interesting because John's mom had German shepherds that only understood German, and they were trained attack dogs. And I remember growing up mm-hmm. seeing uh, a test when somebody. Oh, you saw him oh, in yeah, action. In, yeah, in, it's in, crazy. Hills, yeah, right? when somebody they called, they said, "We're going to jump the wall at this time." <laughs> yeah. Be re- be prepared. Don't be scared. And yeah, it's it's amazing to see the the training of these dogs and the the how smart they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's amazing you know, how it's I've, like a, a switch gets flipped mm-hmm. for them, you know, off of one yeah. word. And then same thing to stop, like in one. It's amazing the control that that. Did you know that we had those kind of dogs? Or, yeah. Um, and so, and what about you? Once you go through the academy and you're now an officer, do you still, how much training? Because we always hear like when these, when these uh, episodes or incidents happen, I should say, a lot of people always say, oh, it's bad training, it's bad training. How much training do you guys go through? Post the academy. Um, so you go through the academy and you get a lot of training in the academy. When you get out of the academy, you are you train, you qualify, you do all that kind of stuff every single year, um, a couple times a year. And, you know, on our free time, you know, we'll do training. Like, you know, when I'm on night shift, we'll do training um, that we need to do, especially if we've got, you know, new officers coming in. We always work with them. We always teach them, hey, this this is what you should do. This is what um, you stay away from. You don't do this. And, you know, that kind of, that helps with them. And it also, you know, builds, builds us too as officers. Have you had to use your gun yet? I have not. And I hopefully will never have to. But you're ready. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, hopefully <laughs> I never have to use it. Uh, that's, that's, uh, I'm not really ready. I'm not like gung ho to, uh, to do anything like that. So no. Uh, what are most of the calls that you respond to? Is it like domestic, uh, dispute kind of stuff? That's the bulk yes, of it. Domestic, domestics are a very, um, a very, I mean, that's what we deal with 90% of the time is what a lot really? of law enforcement deal with 90% of the time. Yes. Uh, and domestics is, are. And how often is alcohol a factor in those calls as well? Um, quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, but it's not, and it's not just alcohol. It could be, you know, any kind of narcotics that are involved as well. Um, or it could be that just there's a lot of, you know, tension between the people. I mean, it could be for anywhere from an argument to a physical altercation with somebody. And do you find that because of your past that you are able to understand those situations a little bit better? Uh, yes. So, you know, with women, a lot of, a lot of people are like, oh, um, you know, she, she got hit by this guy or this guy got hit by this girl and they keep going back to this person. And, you know, they're always like, they're, they're going to just keep going back. Well, yes, you're right. They are going to keep going back until that person is ready to get away from that situation. Our job is to just be there for them when they need us and, you know, talk to them and be like, hey, you don't deserve this. And, do what you can to get out of the situation and do everything you can to help them because some of them are actually scared to get out of the situation because of what could happen to them. And you give them all the outlets and information that you possibly can to assist them in that. Absolutely. And then you said, John mentioned the gun stuff. Are you, do you carry outside of work as well? Or do you, is it you leave the gun at work or, and that's it? Um, Sometimes and sometimes I don't. Um, if I do, it's it's concealed. Like I, I'm not gonna just walk around and flaunt, you know. I mean, do open carry or anything like that. Even though you know there are some areas that allow that, that's just. I mean, that's dangerous for for anybody that's open carry. Right. Yeah. And this, what about like when you're on a vacation right now? Like, do you bring do you do you carry right now? 
No, actually, um, while I'm on vacation, I, I, I didn't bring anything with me, you know. She you're brought, a, uh, she brought uh, these. <laughs> she brought these. You're allowed to though, right? Like you, you have special rules. Like, you, can you board a plane with with a gun or no? Um, I think that you can. I like. I'm not a big fan of flying, obviously. So um, it was difficult for me to get on a plane to come to California. But um, and you know, I don't know all the airline rules because I don't fly all the time. But I do. I think that you can carry, being that you are in law enforcement. So let me understand this correctly. You put your life on the line on a daily basis. Flying makes you nervous. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, you know. Yep, everybody was like, "Wait a minute, you're you're a cop and you're scared of flying." Um, yes, I'm I'm scared of flying. I don't I don't do. I mean, I obviously my job is adrenaline every single day, but you know, I'm not like a huge fan of roller coasters. I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, Skydiving? So. No skydiving. No, no hot air balloon? Mm, I mean, I would try a hot air balloon. It's not. I mean, that that would be pretty simple. Simple, I would think. You know, I'm not going sh up in the air, and um, you know, if hot air balloon has to float back down, I guess. Right. How about bungee jumping? No. Nope. Won't do. Yeah. No, uh, we'll not I like do. that. Yeah, well, she's right up your alley. Yeah, I, I'm not doing any of that. No, well, I cra <laughs> I was in a hot air balloon once, and we crashed when we were oh, landing. Well, While we were okay. landing, we're get in a hot air balloon. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> don't do it. It's dumb. There's no reason for yeah, it. Yeah, John's lost a few yeah. bets for skydiving, yet he still hasn't. Uh, yeah, I lost. Man. I lost a couple bets. Uh, I'm a big UFC fan, and I bet on Conor McGregor uh, a couple times, and oh. he. The two times I bet on him, he lost, and uh, one of the times I, I was supposed to go skydiving, and I, I chickened out. I can't do it. I don't know what I was thinking making that yeah. bet. So he ended up on the strip in a diaper, which was yeah. which was magical. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. That's well, interesting. listen, Officer Nicole, I know you're on vacation, and it was nice of you to even pull over. and One more and, thing for yeah, you. Real go, quick. Go. While well, you're I, have, I have one more thing, too. But okay. While you're down there, be sure to go to the fish market. Best seafood you'll have in, down in that area. The fish market. Is that the fish Laguna? Market. There's Laguna. They're all in that area. Laguna, San Diego. They're all over. How do you know all these okay, things? Okay. I went to San Diego State. I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So I have one yeah, question well, before no. we let you go. I have a, I have a question yes. that hopefully you can help. I can't help but get speeding tickets a couple times a year. I want to know what am I doing wrong other than not speed? Is there a trick? Is there a what do I need to do to just get let go one time? That's all I want to do. Nicole, but before you answer well, that, I keep mean, in mind that his last car had a big action junkies logo <laughs> on the car. You might as well just say cop stop me. Yeah. I was going the well, last speeding yeah, ticket yeah. I got was was for 111 uh in a in a 70. <laughs> I was a little. I was a little bit over the uh, the grace, yeah. But even yeah, so, what? that's a that's a that's a um, you know like, I mean, uh, you know since I've been in L A. So I've actually got to see how people drive in L A. And they are horrible drivers. <laughs> <laughs> horrible drivers. Yeah, well, we're both Pretty born and raised in L A. So there you go. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. I'm from L A. That's the yeah. problem. I'm screwed. All right. I think somebody told me the other day. Um, it's not about going speed limit. It's about keeping up with the traffic. I feel like I do that, so, but I'm always the first car they're keeping up with. I think that's the problem. You're setting the precedent. I'm the pace. I'm the pace car. <laughs> you don't want to be the pace car. Yeah. No, you definitely don't. Maybe if you're in the middle, you know. Yeah. Well, listen. We've got a ton of respect for you and your partner and all of you guys uh, that do what you do every day. We really do, and I know this is probably the toughest time to to do what you do. Uh, with everything going on in the world. And uh, please know that when you do uh, tie the knot, uh, if you want to have a honeymoon in Vegas, let us know. We'll, we'll cover your hotel for the for, for a few nights while you're here and have a good time in Vegas. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You got it. We appreciate you. All right, Officer Nicole. We'll keep up thank with you. you. We're going to keep up with you. Have a great vacation. Okay. Sounds good. All right. That's Officer Nicole. Very nice. See, you didn't, you didn't know what I had planned. I knew nothing. And now I got another guest for you. Oh shit! Good friend of the show. <sighs> do we have time? Yeah, we're gonna we're doing gonna, well. We we have no, no. just enough time. Okay, so do we do we have to set a timer for him? We probably do. Travis just is gonna do a hard stop at four eighteen. 
Okay. It's now 4.14, our time. And who knows? Roger may not even call us until 4.17. Uh, Let me see what he says. No, I just you, you know him. as well as I do that he's going to yes. be calling immediately. Click the link. All right. He's coming. He's coming. Roger Sylvester's coming. We're going to talk about Team Tony, um, which is actually a, you know, it's a sad and feel-good story at the same time. I'm holding the wrong side. Yeah, Team Tony. I'll, I'm going to let Roger tell uh, tell us about Team Tony if Roger calls. Is he calling in, Trap? <laughs> Boom, I hear him. Sideways? Yep, sideways. There you go. I see you. Am I sideways? Am I on? Yeah, you're too close. Your camera's is that way it? too is close. That yeah, but, but it's like we're getting too Whoa. much. Info. Now we're getting kids. Kids everywhere. Kid, they have to sign releases if they're going to be on. It? Now we got a full body. Nobody wants to see there the full body. That's good oh, right there. That's good. Oh. oh, with the flag. I like it. Patriotic and shit. I like it. Is that good? Let me see. Just hold that up. Yeah, that's good. All right, you're, you're on, you're Roger. On, By so... the way, you're on. You're on. We're past sound check here. Oh, you're on. You're on live, that. almost. So Fantastic. Roger, I love it because I'm live. I'm coming at you from the great state of Michigan. How you guys doing out there in Las Vegas? We are good. I uh, I was gonna tell Adam here and the rest of the listeners, viewers about Team Tony, and I thought, you know what? Let me bring in the expert and let me have Roger explain Team Tony. Give us a, and we got to go quick here, Roger. Give us, give us a quick elevator. Uh, story on Team Tony. So the elevator story is this. So Tony Kirkham is from Mount Clemens, Michigan, and he's a firefighter here. He's been a firefighter for over 19 years, okay? And he's been battling cancer. He has uh, thyroid cancer, and he's battling it. He's got a wonderful wife named Michelle, two great kids, Allison and Maggie. And uh, what we've done here is we got together with you guys out there, Action Junkies of Las Vegas, and you can see that. Um, and then we got together also with Sylvester Builders and with my Mark, uh, and that's Jody Wallemeyer out of Macomb County. And she's, she's laser engraving. Yeah. These, these are a 30 ounce team Tony tumbler. And I'm John, all I'm asking for is $35. And these things typically are around 50 bucks with the lid, you know, a Yeti. And I will put this against the Yeti. And, uh, so basically, like I said, so for $35, it's going to help a good cause. And what Tony wants to do with the money, rather than going to himself and to his family, he wants to buy a better mask for the firefighters in Mount Clemens. And uh, this past week, we sold a couple hundred of them. And I'm hoping by going on your guys' show and you guys help me out here and tagging all the guys from the UFC and everybody else, Jake Ellenberger, you name it, John, let's get everybody on board and give us a hand with these. And uh, like I said, they're a 30 ounce. They'll keep your hot, hot and your cold, cold. And uh, and if we just we need your support. We need your help. Well, we have the seven listeners, so if we have the seven, <laughs> yeah, we we can we can sell seven of these. We think we can sell seven with no problem, Rod. How many of these have you sold? You've moved a shocking amount of these in and, a couple and weeks. Just the last, in, in just the last week, right? I just just by going live on Roger that on Facebook, you guys can follow me there. But uh, just by doing Roger Get that, we've sold almost almost two hundred of these, John. Wow, two hundred of them. And so wait, uh, yes. so and Tony is not even keeping the money. We're raising the money for him, and he's donating it back. Is that what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. So he was a volunteer firefighter for many years right. in Mount Clemens. Right, he's a part of the Goodfellas here in Mount Clemens. Um, and uh, not to be confused with the Italian Goodfellas, but anyway, right. he's a part of the Goodfellas, and he does a lot for the community. And he's like, Raj, I just the one thing that I want to do off the bat is I want to get it, it's a particular, it's a it's a different type of mask for the firefighters. And I was kind of surprised that the city or even the state of Michigan, whoever, man, doesn't come up with that money for this. But he's like, listen, I want to get it better because they believe that when firefighters get this type of cancer, it is caused by the fires in which they fight. That was my next question. That was going to be my question. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not to what for sure. It. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and yeah, so that they, and don't, if, they don't know 100 percent for sure, Adam. Um, but. Like I said, so he believes or, or, you know, the doctors and them believe that when firefighters get this thyroid cancer, it is caused by that. So the Tony who just said, well, we only have 10 firefighters in our fire department here in Mount Clemens. So um, he just wants to do that first. And then the rest of the money, we'll figure that out from that point forward. And where do they go to buy them? Do they contact me and I put them in touch with you? Is there a website? What do we do? So all of the above. So basically just Team Tony, right? Yep. Um, Tumblr. Team Tony Tumblr at Yahoo. They can uh, oh. Venmo. They can uh, PayPal it. 
Uh, okay. Just just ship the money over there, and in the notes, put your name, address, email, or what have you, a telephone number, and stuff like that. We are we're, we're she's right now. Jody's actually engraving seventy more of these. She just finished a hundred of these, and it takes a long time, John, because it's more than just the front of the cup, right? So she's <clears throat> my marks on the back. Sylvester Builders and, and Action Junkies. Uh, so there's some time involved here. So she does each cup by hand uh, here in Macomb, in Macomb County, Michigan. So yeah, Team Tony Tumblr at yahoo.com. And so then these, if it's, these, if it's these out of the state of people, Michigan. These 200 we, people that I'm have sorry? gotten this. These 200 people that have gotten this already are going to look at Action Junkies and go, yes. what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. You might have sold 400. You might have sold 400 of these if you left our logo off of it, Roger. But nonetheless, you are a good man, Roger Silvestro. You're a good man doing good things out there. Enjoy your weekend, and thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. Remember, John, Team Tony Tumbler at Yahoo.com. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. Have a great weekend. Right Enjoy. now, Right now, you know what we're about to do? We're ending the show early so we can go and do something we haven't done in five months. We're going to a movie theater, sitting down no. and watching a movie with a bunch of strangers no in way, the same the fucking way. room. Yes. America. <laughs> All right. I'm out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? A movie oh, boy. Are you guys going back to an apartment? No, we're going to a movie we're theater. We're going to a theater. Seats, we're going a going big to a movie screen, house. fucking popcorn and drinks, no mask. It's going to be great. Oh, my God. This is unbelievable. We'll get some yes. pictures. <laughs> roger that, guys. All right, Roger that. We'll see you. Take care, Roger. Have a good We're weekend. Out of here. I'm out of here. I gotta go. I go. Are you coming with me? We're going to the movies. Let's We're go. going to the movies. Goodbye, everybody. All right.